Hey guys, it's Kyle Bennett with HardOCP.com. We're uh, back today. We've had the Ryzen 7 1700. That's the non-X uh, variation on our uh, bench. We're still running this on a Gigabyte X370 Gaming 5, as you can see right there. We've got it loaded up with 16 gigs of Corsair memory, rated at 3000. Uh, obviously this is uh, running underwater and uh, so we've been overclocking on this for about a week now we have uh, two samples of this I went and uh, one of these was purchased from Micro Center and another one was purchased from um, Newegg this is the first sample we got I'll show you here you can see that one ran at 3.842 with 290 or 2933 memory bus 1.4 volts, 1.2 volts, 1.4 volts on the uh, Noctua cooler. So that we did that on air. I'm about to put that one back on the test bench and see how it runs underwater. But I want to show you a little bit about what we're doing here test-wise with these. So currently this one is running at 3.9 gigahertz. It is also on a uh, 2933 memory bus. You can show it's you can see the actual voltage there is coming up to 1.44 1.52 then back down it's variable we have the load line calibration uh, set to extreme on this board so right now we're running a uh, an encode on handbrake you can see we also have heaven running a loop down here in the background as well as Ryzen uh, there the graphic on the uh, blender and if you want, we can uh, roll over here. And you can see we can run Blender while this is going on. You can do this over and over and over again. This system is shown to be really stable. It's uh, This is the third encode I think I've run through on this one with handbrake. So the, uh, the system is definitely heat saturated. We're showing a uh, temperature of 68C on the processor and uh, so out of the three 1700 Ryzen 7 CPUs we have we have um, this one will do 3.9 underwater the other will do 4 underwater and we're about to go back and uh, figure out what that one's going to do underwater. I was in between changing blocks here and just wanted to show you what kind of mate we're getting since uh, lapping the block so I'm going to one hand this mm. Okay. So you can see we're getting great pressure even all the way across the mating surface. It's been doing a really good job of cooling. So we're back here with our other sample of the Ryzen 7 1700. It's uh, running on the same system, the Gigabyte X370 Gaming 5, water-cooled. So this one's been running overnight. It has run multiple, multiple passes of handbrake. We also have it running a, uh, a Heaven benchmark as well. And you can see there is our blender. It'll still run that fine. Temperature settled out at around 70 degrees C. You can see here, went it up with uh, basically 3.85 gigahertz on this one. And there's a RAM clock at 2933. And that system is 100% stable with the 1700. So where does this all leave us when it comes to um, the Ryzen 1700? Uh, so what we ended up having here, well, both these were retail purchased CPUs, 1700 CPUs, one from uh, Micro Center here locally and another from Newegg. And they performed slightly differently, but, but not too much. So this one, let me bring you in closer here. So this one, as you can see on air, this one did 3.182 gigahertz with a 2933 memory bus. 
These were all at uh, 1.4 V cores, which we saw the actual on the board we're using, the Gigabyte board, we saw it fluctuate up to 1.44, 1.45. We had load line calibration set to extreme on them, which we seemed to need. Um, we used a 1.2 volt SOC uh, voltage, and I was using a 1.4 volt on the DRAM that we happened to be using, which was a Corsair rated DRAM for 3000. Um, so on air, this one did 3.182. On water, it did 3.84. Hardly any difference whatsoever. Um, on our other one, this one did 3.917, uh, so right at 3.9 gigahertz. Also with a 2933 memory bus, the same voltages. Um, they both ran about 68C, uh, 70C under load, according to Ryzen Master. Whether or not that's accurate or not, I can't tell you, but that's the, that's the temperature that's being reported back to us. Now, this is... The Ryzen, or I'm sorry, it is the Wraith Spire, which is the uh, which is the stock cooler that comes with the 1700. This isn't actually the box; it's the 1800 box doesn't come with the cooler, or the 1800X. This cooler was not capable of running either one of these CPUs overclocked to that level, and in fact, what I found was around 3.5, 3.6 gigahertz on all cores that you, this would simply not carry the load. Um, at 3.6, we would see uh, external temperatures on this up around 130 degrees. It gets very hot, it's rated for 95 watts, and it simply is not made for overclocking these CPUs. That said, it's a great cooler. I like it, it's well constructed. They did a really good job with the mounting system on it, but it's just not, a, it's just not an edge of the envelope overclocker cooler. This is the air cooler that we use for most of our uh, cooling today for this. It's the Noctua U12S. Um, it's five heat pipe design. It's a really good cooler. This one was happened to be supplied with uh, by AMD to me. Um, this is not the stock fan you get with the cooler if you purchase it. You get a lower uh, RPM fan. This is one of their industrial fans that Noctua sells. It's not that loud, but if you purchase this cooler, you won't get it. Also, we did a bunch of overclocking with the Thermalrite True Spirit 140 Direct. If you look at these coolers, they're, they're honestly almost identical. This one, has, um, this one has the Direct Touch heat pipes, and it comes with the same, uh, came with the fan we used. And honestly, we basically saw the True Spirit and the Noctua stay just about in exactly the same ballpark when it came to overclocking these. So what it's looking like from, now I take it, I've only got two samples here, right? Both these samples were purchased. The other 1700 we ran, which is right here. This was a 1700 non-X sample that came directly from AMD. It did run four gigahertz at the same voltages as these two did, okay? But going back and talking about the ones that we purchased, 3.9, 3.85 on water, 3.8. So 3.8 at the bottom end, I still think we did good. Like I said, both of them would do this on air, 3.8 on air, 3.9 on air, with uh, out going crazy on the voltages. And I go, hey, did he, uh, did he go crazy on the voltages? Absolutely, I did. Um, but what I found was that I just, even under air or water, that uh, these, these, well, let me say this. What I found was that even on air or water, under running high voltages up to 1.5 V core, it just didn't, it didn't make a, didn't make any difference in headroom on the overclocks. Yeah, they stabilized a little bit, but they weren't stable to what we would call stable, where you're running a full eight threads and banging out on the whole system, so. There you go, that's uh, retail AMD Ryzen 7 1700 overclocking. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sell these two samples back off since I paid for these out of my own pocket and uh, we'll go buy a couple more and see how those do.